LPC, LPCC, IMFT, LISW, PhD. If you don't know what any of those are, go ahead and hit the 30 second fast forward button and enjoy the podcast. But if you know someone or happen to have those credentials, then Emerge might be your next career path. If you're seeking to join a team that provides authentic Christian counseling and utilizes advanced modalities, then apply today at emerge.org forward slash careers and join us in the battle to help people find freedom and rest. Welcome to the XM Podcast. Here is your host, mental health therapist, Matthew Kanabi. I am very hard on myself, dealt with severe anxiety. And it made me feel like a monster. I didn't have the energy to care. There was just nothing more but to face what I had been running from. I'm already an anxiety-filled mess. It's just love. Like, it just goes back to love. Welcome back to a special episode of the XM Podcast. Today, we are not just celebrating another impactful conversation, but we are celebrating you, our listeners, and the incredible journey that has brought us to our 100th episode. That's right, 100 episodes of growth, insight, and transformation. Whether you've been with us since day one or you are just checking us out for the first time, thank you for making this milestone possible. Your support drives us to bring hope and healing to the forefront every time we put out a new episode of the Experience Emerge podcast. And what better way to mark this momentous occasion than with an extraordinary guest who embodies everything this podcast is about. He is the director of Arc Churches, a visionary leader helping churches thrive globally. He's a husband, father, author, and pastor of one of the most dynamic churches in the nation, Church of the Highlands in Birmingham, Alabama. Friends, it's an honor to welcome the one and only Pastor Dino Rizzo to the Experience Emerge podcast. Pastor Dino, we are so excited to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us on this milestone episode. Well, it's a it's an honor, and yeah, we need to like the little confetti how it falls down because that is a big deal. I mean, I think that's a huge deal, Matt, and of course, all the team there. Uh, that is, I mean, that's that's a lot. Huh? We we do a few little things like that, but we ain't nowhere near a hundred. Yeah. So, you guys, that that's a lot of commitment. You've had to probably talk to some incredible people, heard some great stories of God's grace and mercy, and how many people you guys have helped. So. Again, it's humbling. It's an honor to be a part, and I'm just so thankful uh, that we could spend a few minutes together. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. And so, just to start out, uh, Dino, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit with our audience who's who Dino Rizzo is and a little bit about yourself. Well, you know, that's that's always you know humbling to talk about yourself, but sure. uh, you know, I, I'm just you know I, I came to Christ through outreach. Uh, I was not raised in a Christian or, or in a Christian space. Uh, you know, we went to church here and there, but it wasn't like it was a big Christian push when I was young. And so a church did an outreach and 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 I got impacted by that, ended up in a, a little church and had a good pastor who tried to disciple me, tried to get me straight. And then went to Bible school, met my wife, uh, met some good friends that I'm still friends with to this day and felt a call to do youth ministry. Got to be a part of that for several years. And then my wife and I launched a church in Baton Rouge in 1993. And um, out of that, after six, seven years, uh, ARC started through a a good friend, Billy Hornsby, and a couple other guys. And uh, out of that, we got to be a part of starting churches and pastored. And now I get to serve at a great church here in Birmingham, Church of the Highlands, and get to serve in outreach and missions area, uh, do a lot of that, and then uh, get to help lead um, church planters, starting new churches. And so it's, it's, you know, God's been good. Mercy, grace, uh, where would we be without the Lord? Uh, it's a lot of that and a good wife, good friends, and mm-hmm. people like, you know, you guys and, and uh, Dr. Crosby and Dr. Litchie and others. And I'm just so great. I mean, I am, I am, I am a blessed man because of good friends mm-hmm. and uh, people that have poured into my life and that have, that have you know, helped lead me and, and guide me. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to where I am. That's good. Um you mentioned ARC and, and kind of the precipice of that. And I, I think our audience would like to hear a little bit about what ARC is. I th- I, I'm aware and 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 know, and I, I, I've talked to people and they're like, man, that's a really interesting 
thing that I, I think um, without me giving it away, why don't you share <laughs> with, our, with our audience what ARC is um, and, and what it stands for and, and, and what you're doing? Yeah. Well, it's, it's Association of Related Churches. So you would think it's just a relational deal, but we do something. We launch new churches. And so we're a church planting uh, organization that we help start new couples that have a dream in their heart to go plant a church, start a new church. And so that we're right at 24 years old. I think we're getting ready to be 24 years old, about to cross that. We've launched about 1,131, 32 churches uh, new churches. And so that started, you know, with just a, a few pastors that had a heart to, uh, help somebody maybe be trained and resourced and give them some finances and, and where they, they didn't have to launch alone, uh, but we could do it together. And that's where it started from our founders. And then out of that, it just continued on. And there's some uniqueness about us, how we resource that church planner, how we train them, how we come alongside of them. And you know we're not a denomination. We're not. We're not gonna. They, each church is is autonomous. They have their own government. They have their elders, their trustees, their oversight, their overseers. We get them started, and we and our motto is to launch large. So we're we're gonna coach them up, uh, do everything we can to to match them with other church planters that have done well, and and to get them healthy, and and to ha- get them to their best first service. And then to be able to see them flourish and and be sustainable through relationships and through their own uh you know health and their own organizations that they choose. So we're a part of a lot of different groups and a lot of different denominations because sometimes we we become a subcontractor yeah. and we're we're helping you get launched. So that's happened and God's blessed it, Matt. And we're it's amazing what you know with the with what's going on in the world today that church planting is still thriving and people are launching great churches and people are coming to Christ and people are finding small groups and young people are getting excited. So it's, it's what I think is more needed now than ever is, is, is strong new churches in, in great cities to come alongside of other great churches, of course, that are there and, uh, and, and make a difference. I, th- I think it's such a cool concept. Um, Cause a lot of people ask me is like, Oh, is ARCA denomination? And I think that's the interesting thing that that that's not, the, the never pre- has been yeah that's not the thing it's more about um vetting helping you know getting the that church ready for day one if it's a this uh you know uh denomination or if it's a non-denomination um yeah. i think that's the really interesting thing that that um you know i think a lot of people are, are inquisitive about with with art which i think has been a really cool model yeah, and that we and that's what we wanted from day one. We, you know, we there are people in great families of churches, great gatherings of churches, and we we wanted to get them started well, and then do everything we can to see them flourish uh, in their community uh, with their leadership, uh, connecting them to great resources like yourself and other things that are out there to keep pastors healthy, and and so they could keep making a difference where they are, and and that's just always been our thing. We we just felt like. That there are other great denominations, and they can they can tend to that. That's not what we're doing. We're going to start new churches, and then every church is autonomous and independent, and they get to have their. You know, we give people a playbook, and we give them a template that we feel like has worked, and 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 those are important things for them to follow mm-hmm. that playbook. But really, from there, they get to follow the dream that God has put in their heart to make a difference in that community and to reach lost, hurting humanity. Yeah. I would say in my field, and I'm probably generalizing a little bit, but almost once a week, I meet somebody that says, God's put on my heart to be a church planner and um, love that. And I think it's great. What would you say to that person? Um, Because I do think that there's a lot of people um, in the Christian community that, you know, believe God's, and I I do believe that, but I also believe it's not as easy as just saying, okay, God's put that on my heart and tomorrow we're going to open the doors. Um, what would be some of your thoughts to somebody who's saying, you know what, I'm fe- feeling led and called to be a church planter? Well, there's there's a lot of friends with at Emerge who are church planters. I, I get to talk to some of them that, you know, believe in it. And so we we have good conversations about what's happening in church planting world today. Uh, and there's a lot of great church planting organizations. We're just one of them. But, you know, it, we, nobody, you know, Jesus started. And of course, uh, mm-hmm. you see it in the book of Acts. 
Mm-hmm. So that's a good playbook. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just trying to follow what we see the Holy Spirit did in the book of Acts. But, uh, you, you know, I, I always, number one, say, you know, are you called? Has, is this a God thing? And you need to make your calling sure. Are you are you serving? Is, is there other people that have said, yes, this is on your life? Mm-hmm. You know, is your marriage in agreement with this is your, is your mentors and your models and your ministry experience and other things like that. Is there a confirmation an affirmation on your life, you know, to go down that path and it's a long pathway. So we, you know, we're, we're getting with couples, Matt, that are, you know, 18 months out a year out. We want to, we want to walk with you. We want to get to know you. We want to, we want to know stuff and, and we want to, we want to walk you through some some process and and w- whatever it is you need. So it, it takes a while. And a lot of times people are not, you know, willing to wait. And, you know, we, there's when, when we have a couple that comes to us and they begin to go through the process and begin to take the journey, you know, we a lot of times we'll say, man, not with us or not now. Or, you know what, we don't see it on your life. Or then another couple, we may say, we believe that that this is obvious the call of God on your life. So, you know, we do some yes, no, and not now, or not with us, yeah, yeah. you know, for, for couples. But there are cities right now that have population booms. There are cities that are undersaturated. Mm-hmm. There are there are communities all around the United States, around the world that are hurting, mm-hmm. that are being decimated by poverty and pain and addiction. So we need all kinds of people, uh, diverse uh, in, in all ways, that are going into to, to preach the gospel and are building great churches that care for, you know, the loss and care for families and, and, and those that are, that are navigating the pain of this life. So we're, you know, again, we're one of the church planning organizations. There's great ones out there. Yeah. So if, if we do have a listener and, and they feel like that has been their calling and, and they feel like, you know, all of those criteria that you said is ARC a place that they just reach out to and say, Hey, yeah. We're, we're interested and in, and in feel like the Lord's leading us this way. And, and how do we yeah. they do that? Yeah, I mean, artchurches.com. You go to the website, believe it or not, or you, you reach out to us. And, and we would love to talk with you. We'd love to walk with you. We'd love to, you know, hear your story. Mm-hmm. What has God done? And get to meet you and, and see, you know, where, where, you know, is it church planning or is it missions or is it, Man, I, I just have a heart to make a difference. Where can you do that in the context of a of an existing church, a great existing church? Yeah. You know, are are you called to pastor people? Are you called to disciple? Are you called to lay your life down for hurting humanity? You know, for the cause of Christ. I mean, I I, I love those conversations, man. I I get excited when someone calls me and says, "I think I feel like I'm supposed to plant a church." Oh, wow! Well, then let's let's talk about that. Let's yeah yeah. Let, let's see if that is on your life. You know, and and so yeah, I mean, get a hold of us uh, uh, again. We'd we'd love to have that chat with you, and yeah. let's see what God is saying. So that that would be the that would be the thrill of our heart to get a call from this this that, this hundredth episode. I, I would love that, and, and you know that that's the thing. We started this this podcast out not even thinking we might reach one person. I had, I had no idea when Dr. Crosby came to me and said, "Hey, Matt, you've been a musician most of your life. Why don't wow. you do a podcast?" And I'm like. Well, those aren't related, but um, let's go and do it. And here we are. And I think that the interesting thing is, you know, this this little podcast that could we're on every continent uh, on this th- this earth. And so um, there are wow. people living listening to this that I have no idea. As you, as you and I prayed before um, mm. we we hit record, it's like, Lord, I have no idea who's going to be um, listening and tuning into this episode. And 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 this might be that that calling that someone's like, I don't know where to start, but I feel like the Lord's put that on my heart. And, um, yeah. and I think, you know, we can talk a, a second about, you know, what I've noticed, and I'm sure, Dino, you have as well. The last several years of pastoring have been very, very difficult. And I probably talked to more pastors as a mental health therapist that are, are struggling to stay in the ministry because culture, because of, of so many different things that, that have been so difficult. You know, I think it's really important that, as you said, really look at going, is this a calling or are there other areas that maybe God's calling you to? Because I think a lot of times it's easy for us to to fall into saying, 
well, you know, the Lord's calling me to ministry, so I must plant a church. Well, there's <laughs> there's a million other things that that a calling could be that 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 refer to different parts of the body that um, I think are so important. What are some of your thoughts, at least? you know, maybe over the last several years that that's weighing on pastors, that's, that's, you know, things that maybe needs to be on their minds, especially in the idea of, of planning a church right now. Yeah. Well, you, you said it well, I mean, there's a lot of expressions in the body, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it's, I'm um, to be, I'm to serve, I'm um, to run a great business. I'm to be a school teacher. I'm, I'm to be at the house. You know, there's a lot of expressions of, you know, ministry is manifesting Christ in the, in the, in the context that you're in, Mm -hmm. you know, that's to me, ministry, you're serving, you're being a servant of Christ. You know, if there's an opportunity for it to be a vocation or by vocation, I was by vocational for several years when we started our church or whatever the dynamic is, you know, I, I think there's a, there's a confirmation that will come on your life. It takes a moment. It, God is not in a rush to grow any of us for mm-hmm. visibility. We barely can handle visibility uh, ourselves. You know, so God is, is never in a rush with it. Anything that happens fast normally is not super healthy. You know, and most of the great churches that I love and respect, and you do too, it's take it takes a while. It takes a while to grow mm-hmm. a church, uh, a people. And so... You know, you, you, it is tough. These these days are hard. I mean, and and we have our own humanity to deal with. Uh, people will call me and say, man, we have a church problem. We have a church planner problem. We have a, a missions problem. We have a, a teacher problem. We have a worship leader problem. We have a human problem. Mm-hmm. And it, it started in, in, in the book of Genesis early on. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a humanity. Day one. <laughs> Day one. We just, <laughs> man, sin and the enemy and our bad decisions and our our flesh and our 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 thoughts our you know it, it's the book the mind is a battlefield That's you right. know you're just dealing with things and then so if if you're not if, if you know if you're not submitted and surrendered and and in community and getting healthy yourself and trying to sustain your own walk with God and your marriage and your kids you know the last thing you need to do is then okay I need to go plant a church you mm-hmm. know it, it you know it's it's out of our to me out of our relationship with Christ comes ministry. It's not out of ministry comes a relationship. Amen. Out of my relationship with Christ comes a church plant, comes a sermon, comes an outreach, feeds the poor, writes a book. And so, you know, the, it, you know, it's, it's, these are times where, you know, it, it is a struggle. People are quitting. I talked to a lot of guys that are tapping out. Yeah. And, and I think so much of it, I know for me, so much of the bad seasons of my life have come in the prayerless seasons, mm. in the non-spiritual disciplined seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't mean that you, you, you're you praying and you're doing all those things and you still won't have a battle. But man, there's so much better when you're tapping in. And that's what I love about my pastor, Chris Hodges. That's a man of prayer. That man spends time in prayer. It's been a model for me. And, um, so yes, it is hard. People are quitting, um, but at the same time, there are people flourishing. That's right. And there's some amazing things happening around the world uh, that are reaching people and that are populating heaven, plundering hell, yeah. and are making a big difference for the cause of Christ. I was just talking to a group this week, and they're finishing up a translation in Scripture that ten years ago we we would have never thought that would happen this mm-hmm. quick for this people group, it's like 9 million people are in this dialect of language and now they're going to have the new Testament and it's happened in a shorter time than they expected. I think it's three years ahead of schedule to God be the glory that those precious people are going to have scripture. That's amazing thing that's happening right now. Yeah. There are phenomenal things happening in the body of Christ. Yeah. And, uh, but, but there are storms that, that blow in and, 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 and hurt us. Yeah, I, and I appreciate you you shedding that light on it too because I didn't want to paint just the the dark picture, um, you know, because out of these dark times there there's so many amazing redemptive stories that that come from that, and um, that kind of leads me into my next section. I, I'd love for you if you'd be open to share a little bit about your emerge connection and your emerge story because 
Um, you know, the, the the bit I've heard about it, it, it it's greatly impactful and and uh, really such a, an awesome testimony. If you wouldn't mind just kind of sharing your story. Yeah, I heard about it merged to a friend, um, a dear friend of mine that we went to Bible school together. And my wife and I had stepped down from our church and we were just trying to figure out what was next. And um, and doing everything we could to to strengthen our spirit, our soul, our marriage, our relationship, and uh, and a friend told me about emerge, and I I, I, I I I had never even heard of it. I can't believe it. Just in the in the in the flow that we were in, and when you're you, you know sometimes you don't need something till you need it, yeah, and we right. needed it, and you know and I'll never forget we came we came and spent five days there, and with. Uh, one of one of the legends there, Doctor Litchie, yeah. who uh, and and he spent five days with us, and uh, cried with us, prayed with us, counseled with us. He did. I mean, the Holy Spirit used him to do surgery mm-hmm. on my life, and I'll never forget. You know, and 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 you know what else it happened, Matt? Is he gave me some understanding of just where I was in my life and you know, in my own disappointments in how I had disappointed people and how I had, you know, made bad decisions. And I'll never forget, he and I were sitting together one afternoon there at, at Emergent. And he, he said, what do you, what do you think we've learned? And I said, here's what I've learned about myself um, is I, I took my eyes off of God and I put them on myself I took my eyes off of my family and I put them on myself. I, I took my eyes off of others and I put them on myself. And I I became very me, myself, and I, which is unhealthy, which is sinful, which is failure, which is never good in the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. It always ends up painful. And um, and it was like I got clarity on on my own life and my own journey. And and it that brought me through a season of repentance, a season of of learning, a, a season of wanting to see my spirit uh, reconciled with God, and 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 to be a better husband, and a better dad, and a better friend, and a better servant. And so, you know, it was it it, it was like I, you know, it's like the alarm went off. I, I heard the alarm. Something woke me up out of my you know own selfishness. And, you know, and out of my own pride and ego that, that gets in the way of so many things. And and I just thank God for it. I, You know, I don't know how many times I, in, in moments, tell the story of, of that conversation. Mm-hmm. And I have found out that when you take your eyes off of God and you put them on yourself, uh, things are not good. Mm-hmm. Things don't go well for you mm-hmm. and uh, or your family or or whatever you're trying to do for the Lord. And so it was a, those were key conversations. And like two months later, my wife and I came back just for just another, we just begged Dr. Litchie, could you spend, please spend another week with us? Yeah, yeah. Spend another four days. And then over a period of a year, probably even longer than that, you know, of, of counseling, mm-hmm. uh, help, uh, you know, rebuke, mm-hmm. correction, uh, and coaching for, for our own lives. And uh, and continue to be dear friends. And now I thank God for Dr. Crosby and, and everything that you guys do. It, it continues to be a source of strength. And um, I don't know. I just see emerge, and I think, wow, they they give hope. They mm-hmm. give hope. I, I think that's awesome. I, I think it's wise. Um, I think a lot of times what I have noticed, not only even just with myself, but pastors, people in ministry. There's a fear of going, I might need somebody outside of myself, or I might not have all of the answers. And I I think there's been a stigma that's probably maybe going away a little bit that, you know, I'm weak if I have to go to counseling or if I had to seek out a mentor or or go to an intensive, uh, you know, four or five day, you know, what does that say to the church? What does that say? You know, but I think I think there's such strength in recognizing that. I don't have all the strength right now and being open to doing something like that. Does that, does that resonate with you? Oh, it's everything. It's everything. Yeah. It's, it's, it, 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 it's like you're a fly on the wall of my conversations right now with people. Mm. It's like, get help, get help, 
get help, get help. Yeah. You know, don't, you know, if, if you're your own advice, that's trouble. If, <laughs> if you're, if you're handling your own pain, that's trouble. If you are navigating your own stuff, that's trouble. Talk to someone, involve someone, go to a professional, go to your pastor, you know, do something, make a move, yeah. but do not get paralyzed in that lie that I can handle all these things by myself. You know, we, we, we have a statement in Louisiana. I pastored there for all those years, you know, that there's one by you, you don't want to live on. It's called by yourself. Ain't nothing but trouble yeah. for, for everybody. Right. When you just isolate and you feel like, well, if I raise my hand, I need help. You know, they're going to think less of me. Yeah. And it's like, okay. Well then just, they're going to really think less of you when you don't change or you don't correct or you don't repent or you don't change the things that are unhealthy, you know, so go ahead. And sooner than later is always the better advice when you are not healthy and, and, and you're living in offense or you're living in anger mm -hmm. or, or, or all these things that can get on our lot addiction you know, it, it never, it never fixes itself. I mean, it's just, it just doesn't correct itself. You need God and you need God's people. It's kind of the Bible. Yep. It's very, it's very much of the Bible. I, you know, um, kind of what you described with Dr. Litchie um, provided, uh, we call soul care intensives now, which is a, yep. a couple of days where you come stay with, a, a, you know, with, with us in Akron and, um, or PA. And, um, you know, when we, when we were developing the program more often than not, it was the, the ambulance at the bottom of, of the hill or the bottom of the mountain where it's like the addictions already taken over yeah. moral failure. But what I've noticed over the last couple of years is more and more and more pastors are going, look, I can see trouble ahead and I don't want to go over the cliff but I feel like I need to utilize that intensive to yes. kind of work some of these things out before I get to the bottom where everything's falling apart. And, and I want to encourage people, you don't have to hit the bottom of the hill before you get help. I mean, oftentimes when I come in as a mental health therapist, it's on that person's worst day or it's their rock bottom. But man, I if I if, if if people listening, if I could share anything, it's like we can get involved. You can get a pastor involved or others involved before you get there. But I think a lot of times, and, and you may be able to speak to this, I don't know if it's a person's pride or if it's or what it is that doesn't allow them to get there before it's it's something that has to be done. Does that does that make sense? Oh, it's a, you, you, amen, 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 amen. I mean, it's. <laughs> It's and and you're right. I think there are more and more groups, pastors, organizations that are saying, "Work on it now. Yeah. Work on it. Have the conversation. Get healthy. Take the time off. Rest. You know, go on a, a spiritual sabbatical. Yeah. Go. You and your wife go on a retreat. You know, get, to take your kids on a retreat. There's all these different programs around the country, and we use a lot of them. I mean, we've, we've got some mental health coaches and counselors that are involved mm -hmm. with the church planning. You guys are helping us. So Dr. Crosby has given us a, a ton of advice on church planters and pastors. And, you know, I'm always thankful because you, you are one call away when yep. somebody calls me and says, man, I don't feel good. I don't like what I'm thinking. I don't like where I'm at in my life. I feel exhausted. Uh, I'm, I'm hurt. Someone has hurt me or yeah. I'm a victim of something, you know, I, or, you know, this, something happened when I was a child, a teenager, yeah. this thing is coming up now in anger, in isolation. It, there's a, there's a wedge in my marriage. Yeah. You know, it is, it is better. Um, you know, of course there, it's, it's tough. It's painful. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of trauma. There's a lot of hurt, but I do see that people are starting to raise their hand a little more and are saying, Hey man, can you, do you know anyone? I, I, I'll have probably someone call me every other week that just says, hey, do you know someone I can talk to about this? Or yeah. I've got a teenager or my, you know, I'm just, I think our marriage needs a little, little touch up. Yeah. yeah. You know, where I can go, 
things like that. So it is, I think it's happening more. It needs to happen more. Yeah. You know, and, and I would encourage every single person. You're not weak when you when you seek help. You're wise. Yeah. Uh, you're, it's not like you're the you're the troublesome person. No, you're probably the person that's going to find victory. Yeah. You, you're, you're gonna. You're not a loser because you're hurting. You're not a loser because you, you you're you're needing some people to come alongside. You're you really win when you do that. And again, that's all across the scripture. And, and and I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in my own life. My my worst days were the days that I am hard headed. I don't listen. I don't need anybody. You know, my dad was a good, strong Italian man, hmm. and he held everything close. And so I the, I was mentored in that. Hmm. I was mentored in you don't be careful who you trust. Don't don't reveal it all. Don't go a hundred percent with anyone. Go 95. Well, what you don't realize is that 5% that's a secret or that 5% that you're not allowing the Holy Spirit access to, uh, a spiritual person, your spouse, that 5% grows. Yep. And it's like, you know, go ahead and everybody needs somebody that they can go 100 with yeah. in whatever their situation is. And so, you know, and I think, you know, that's what you guys are about. That's what that's what you're saying, Matt. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I do believe, and I, I'm sure you do as well. That's what we were created for that. And I, I, I think, you know, those, that 5%, that that's the sickness. That's it's the, bubble. that's the cancer that, that starts to exponentially show itself. And, um, and, and, and that's the thing, you know, if, if anything, I, man, I, I, I'm a true believer in this. If you don't have one person in your life, maybe two that you can just go here is all my stuff without judgment just being able to bear that then uh i think you're missing out on a very important part of life and i think i think a majority of people go through life without that i i had a a pastor not long ago sitting on my couch and he was sharing some of the things that you and i talked about and he pastors a very large church every week and during the week he's around hundreds if not thousands of people and i looked at him like who's your best friend and he looked at me like i i don't have one and i'm like well who do you go to when you're hurting well i don't know and i'm like there's not you're not gonna be able to do that very long you know you you can't continue to pastor all of these people if you don't have that and um one hour a week with me is not going to do it you know you you need somebody to be able to do that and i yeah. i think i think a lot of people because of fear of judgment or um you know i think there there's probably been times in our history and probably still where churches would discipline somebody for having you know um you know, issues that may take them to counseling. So I think there's fear of revealing that. I know a lot of pastors are like, well, you know, are you going to turn this into our district or turn this into our denomination? And, you know, and those things, you know, I'm 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 not doing those types of things. But I, I do think that there's a lot of, you know, of those fears and, and, yeah, you get and fearful. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. You get fearful and you and I mean it's again, it's Genesis. Adam and Eve hid. That's right. And we we have a tendency in our humanity to hide. Yeah. And it's the worst thing. Yeah. We hide. And then our God comes looking for us. That's good. Because of his love, his grace, his mercy, his truth, his healing, his freedom. And, you know, I'll, I'll never forget there was a time. I think it was when when I was talking to, I was, it was either Dr. Litchie or maybe one of the other counselors. But, you know, he said, you know, God loves you enough to bring a necessary ending. Mm. He will do a, it's an ending now. So he ended that so you could experience him now in this. So would you have rather not experienced him healing, freedom, transparency and live that way? Or even though, it, you, you know, you had to go through this valley and, and you, you know, you had to learn this. But look, you're, you could be a 2.0 possibly. Yeah. If you, you know, can work hard and, and do what you need to do and live the way and again, uh, repent and do restitution and reconcile all these things that, that Jesus taught us about. But, you know, and I remember him, he or one of the counselors told me that and it was like, wow, that God loves me enough to end something so that uh, I can go 
um, discover, you know, what he has for me that's different than what I'm experiencing now or not allowing myself to experience. I mean, how many ministries have been born out of that concept? I mean, I I think that's that's such a huge thing. I, I share this with most of my clients. It's like, do you think God would have sent sent a savior if you didn't need saved? Like, you know, mm-hmm. we we all we we need saved, uh, and if, if if we don't, then um, you know, we're we're probably missing out on a big part of the relationship that we have. But you know, I, I think it's through the adversities, you know, of our life, and and those are the things that shape us into who we are. And I, I can tell you, and I've said this on the podcast many times, people are probably bored hearing it, but. I never had a plan of being a mental health therapist. That was never part of my journey, but God had a different plan. But I went through a very dark part of my life that God reshaped me. He He retooled the way I, I perceive things. And it was through therapy that my therapist said, hey, have you ever thought about doing what I do? And, th- and uh, that's in that moment, I'm like, well, now you need therapy. <laughs> you obviously have not been listening to anything I've shared with you yeah, over the last yeah. year, I'm the last person that should be doing this. But that was just like one of those those moments where I, I look back now, 15, 16, 17 years later, and I'm like, the Lord had a plan and use that difficult period that I went through to reshape a, a, a path and a, and a journey and a ministry that I never I never would have carved that out. I would have never gone in that way, but I needed I needed saved out of that to to even get into that. So I that's why I say I think a lot of ministries have probably been born out of that mentality. Well, yeah. And I think you can do that when you own your stuff and your failure and your your brokenness. Yeah. And and your, you know, whether it's the pain that you you have caused the yeah. pain that it's caused you, the pain that it's caused others, uh, the, the maybe the pain that came your way, I don't, whatever dynamic it is that you you face, and 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 then you there is this opportunity then to say, okay, God, what now? What next yeah. for my life, my soul, my spirit? Um, and and I, again, I, I'm I'm thankful. I just sit here thinking, you know, you know that intensive was uh it was a turning point for me you know it was a turning point for me to choose some things i had to make some choices uh and i I would encourage every person that you know do it before it's too late uh get help uh do all you can because you never know what's on the other side of you getting healthy and getting whole for as a husband as a as a a wife as a neighbor as just a christian yeah. You know, I, I mean, that's, I think that's, I had somebody today ask me, what do I aspire to be? What are you trying to be? What do you, what do you think the whole thing is at the end of it? I said, I'll, I I want to be a good Christian. Mm-hmm. You know, I think out of, out of that relationship, everything sh- would flow, mm-hmm. you know, it's, and it, it, and where, where, in where it gets messed up is when that gets reversed out of some calling, some pulpit, some ministry position, I'm going to try to function out of that. That's not it. You're yeah. functioning out of that relationship with Christ like you or like me. And then out of that, something grew that yeah. only God could have grown. That's right. And, and only God can prune. That's good. You know, I I, I so appreciate you um, spending time with us. And I know you're very busy and you've got a lot going on. And um, it means it means the world that you are our um, hundredth episode guest and that's a, it's pretty awesome. And I, I'm so thankful. One zero zero. That's, that's right. The big so one. If we get to the 200, maybe I'll call you back again, but uh, really appreciate well, I'll call you or call Dr. Crosby. I'll just yeah, say, yeah. Hey, remember, remember, remember. <laughs> yeah. Maybe next one we'll figure it out. And we'll do it in person or something like that, but um, really appreciate anything else on your heart that you would like to share with our audi- audience. No, again, I've said it five times, but I, I am thankful for what you do. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and what you guys are about, and your team, and the people that work there, are, are kind, are loving. You know, it, it, sometimes you're in a bad place, and you just think everybody's going. It's going to be real judgy. Everybody's going to judge you. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've I've never felt that from you guys at all. At, at zero. I mean, it's just nothing but you know, uh, uh, correction, 
discipline, truth, grace, all those things we need in our life. It's all those fruits of the spirit that we need in our life. And so I would encourage anyone that, uh, again, if you if you just feel like, man, I, I just want to go get healthy. I just feel like I need a little break. Uh, this is a great place to start. And I, again, I'm thankful for the several times that we've been there to, to Akron. Come on, shout out to Akron. <laughs> That's yeah. right. So you, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. God bless you. And um, yeah, thanks for uh, sharing your heart on our podcast. Thank you, Dino, for your kind words and commitment to kingdom building. We are so appreciative of your time and connection to our ministry here at Emerge. So 100 episodes. You'd think by now I could get my microphone working correctly, but something has happened in these last two episodes and I could not fix my mic and I apologize for how that sounded. But you know what? It's okay. We appreciate your support. We are looking forward to the next 100 episodes. Please give us a five-star rating. If you don't mind, it just helps us get this message to more people. Well, until next time, or when our Savior comes, God bless.